Tonight, evening goes to Ireland. It's a place that has so many historical links. From food and fun to the stuff of fairy tales. And that she comes. We'll show you the beauty and spirit of Ireland. It's evening from the Emerald Isle. Now, here's Kim Holcomb. This is evening from Dublin, Ireland. I am so excited to take you on a tour of this beautiful country, the Emerald Isle. And we are here thanks to our friends at Adventures by Disney. Going on vacation with Adventures by Disney is sort of like having a backstage pass to the world. All you have to do is show up. The adventure guides take care of the rest. Every aspect of your vacation is carefully planned out ahead of time, making for a culturally immersive and stress-free trip full of once-in-a-lifetime experiences. The joy to me is bringing these stories to life and what brings stories to life better than the characters and the stories that they tell and just everything that they want to share with you. No matter where we travel with Adventures by Disney, we've gone out of the way to find those perfect storytellers that bring that destination to life. Sweet Caroline. And our adventure begins right here in the Fair City, where there is so much to experience and see and taste. Here's what we did in just one day. Dublin is Ireland's largest city, but at roughly half the size of Seattle, it is best seen on foot. No one has ever been fined for jaywalking in the history of the state. Oh, we drive on the correct side. Yeah, yeah. The River Liffey runs through the center of the city. Just steps away is the neighborhood known as Temple Bar, where narrow streets are lined by 300-year-old cobblestones and pubs. Modern crowds come for the colorful shops and nightlife at places like famous Speakeasy, Vintage Cocktail Club, or the Temple Bar, where an inconspicuous camera streams a shot of the entrance live online every second of the day. The city is also home to ancient landmarks like Christchurch Cathedral, first built in 1171. So we're going to start right about now. The epic Irish Emigration Museum is a reminder that we all come from somewhere. There are 20 interactive galleries walking visitors through the history of Ireland, why so many people left for better lives, and the ripple effect it had abroad, especially in America. It's pretty interesting when you said how many American presidents have Irish heritage. Yeah, 22, which is mental. Like, it's, it's nearly just under 50%. Recognize this Spokane native? And Bing Crosby, of course, being one of the most quintessential voices of his time. His great-great-grandfather was an Irish immigrant. For lunch, we dined at Nancy Hands, a classic Dublin restaurant with a vintage Victorian bar. The menu boasts authentic Irish fare like beef stew, and something called Red Lemonade, the favored sweet soda of Irish kids, no matter their age. Nothing like it. But the drink of choice for most people 18 and over can be found behind the big black gates of Dublin's Guinness Storehouse. An immersive experience walking visitors through the brewing process, which includes hops imported from the Yakima Valley. But the big payoff is on the upper levels, where you can learn how to properly pour a pint of Guinness. Mine didn't overfill. And nothing beats the beer or the views served up at the seventh floor gravity bar. Her eyes shone like diamonds. We ended our day with a musical pub crawl. It's all about just chilling, having a nice time, having a beer or two, and enjoying the music. Traditional Irish music is an informal art rooted in native culture and celebrated by anyone willing to join in. If a musical pub crawl isn't your thing, they also have a literary pub crawl and for the more daring among you, a whiskey themed crawl next time. Okay, not too far from Dublin, you will find a spectacular site, the Rock of Cashel, also known as St. Patrick's Rock. Yes, that's St. Patrick. Welcome to the Rock of Cashel, Cashel Naree, the seat of the Kings of Munster. It ultimately was where St. Patrick converted the pagan Christian Irish kings to Christianity and it's said that it was here on this site that he plucked the humble shamrock from the ground 
and that he used it to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity. And that's how the shamrock sprung to international fame and has become associated with St. Patrick. For more than 1,400 years, the Rock of Cashel has been a sacred site, and our own Adventures by Disney tour guide Stephen Burke knows this place better than most. So this road out here just runs three miles or four miles out to a little village called Golden. And it was back in 1169 that my family came with the Norman invasion of Ireland to this little village. And up until my grandfather's generation, in fact, we still lived in this area and very close to here. So suffice to say, you know a lot about this and you know a lot about this. This is home. It's a place that has so many historical links that there's something for everyone to take away. If it's a photograph in an archway, if it's a little piece of stone carving, if it's the Romanesque church, whatever it is, there's something small here for everyone to be inspired by. Still ahead, a 3,000 year old sport still played today. We get a lesson in hurling <laughs> and explore the adventure and luxury of a castle turned hotel when evening from the Emerald Isle returns. Travel and accommodations for team evening provided by Adventures by Disney. Welcome back to Evening in Ireland. Our tour of the Emerald Isle continues with a must-see spot, the small town of Kenmare. <laughs> Founded in 1670, it's now a mixture of vibrant shops and eateries with ancient sites like the Stone Circle. It was built during the Bronze Age by the Druids and it's the biggest one in Southwest Ireland. You'll also find a hawthorn tree nearby. It's known as the fairy tree in Celtic mythology and you can write a wish and then hang it from a branch. Mine was for my kids. It was definitely one of the most meaningful moments of this Adventures by Disney trip. This truly is a trip full of once in a lifetime experiences like this castle, more on that in a second. But first I had a blast playing the ancient Irish and Gaelic sport of hurling. Good ball, really good ball. Centuries before soccer pitches or football fields, the Irish were playing their national game, hurling. It is the oldest and fastest field sport in the world. Andrew Bulger first learned the 3,000-year-old sports at age four. It can be punishing. I have two teeth gone, uh, dislocated shoulder a number of times, and this hand doesn't bend back any further than that. But our lesson would be gentle, an introduction to the basics. The stick is a hurley. The ball is known as a slitter, and you can only play for the team in the town where you were born. So there's no transfers, no drafting, none of that. You're loyal to your county. For the purposes of our lesson, we would temporarily become the Kilkenny Cats, coached by Connor Lennon. This is the first big no-no, okay? So you can't pick up the ball off the ground. Instead, you use the hurley to scoop the slitter. Kim, you're a natural. Okay. I'm a natural. <laughs> but it got harder. Carrying the ball is like an egg and spoon race. And when it came to hitting... Oh! Do you see it? It's, uh, so far, you can't even see it. Let's just say I needed some work. But in time, everything started connecting. And the Kilkenny Cats were ready for a friendly competition. We want to take three shots each and see who can get the highest score, OK? Nice one, buddy! In hurling, you score by hitting it into the net. Oh, to the legs! Or through the goalposts. Nice! Great strike. It's so much harder than it looks. I've lost my breath, but I'm not going to let on because I'm winning against my boys. By the time I stepped up, the pressure was on. I couldn't believe it, but hurling is rooted in humility. There's no dancing, no big huddles, no sliding. This is kind of this is kind of the extent you get. So I did my best to keep my cool until our coach wasn't looking anymore. After just one lesson, this group of Americans fell in love with Ireland's original sport. An ancient game that's still modern day fun.
The great news is I can continue the sport of hurling as soon as I get home. The Seattle Gales practice once a week in Magnuson Park. But this is something you will not see anywhere near Seattle. Dremoland Castle was first built in the 1500s and now it's a five-star hotel that you can sleep in. Seriously, take a look. Dremoland Castle has been a destination for hundreds of years, but not always like this. Castles, they were built for defense. If someone was coming to your castle 300 years ago, 500 years ago, he wasn't exactly coming for afternoon tea. Modern guests are welcomed with open arms thanks to the castle's transformation into an historic hotel. Members of the O'Brien clan watch over afternoon tea. But despite all its majesty, Dremoland is fairly casual. You can golf at the 18-hole championship course, try clay pigeon shooting, fish for trout, That's it. <laughs> or take aim and fire. That's awesome! At a 5,000-year-old Irish tradition. Okay. Good. Lower and fire. Well done. Oh. Oh. Well done. Oh. I got a bullseye. That is amazing. <laughs> that is just incredible. And the place in. But the most memorable experience may be a walk with Mike and his partner. Okay. So all we have to do is give her a little, give her a little food and give her a call. Named Darby. And back she comes. A trained oh, Harris Hawk who also allows guests to be her perch. Hi. Falconry's been in Ireland since the 7th century. These days, it's a hobby and inspiration for pop culture. Recognize that walk from Jurassic Park? This is how the animators got the, the movement of the velociraptors down. Darby prefers to be at the end of her rope, though she always comes back when called. However you choose to spend your time, Dremolin Castle is like a real-life fairy tale, helping you feel present in the past. And there's one more place kind of nearby that is certainly worth seeing given our connection to Boeing. The Foynes Flying Boat and Maritime Museum is home to the world's only full-size replica of a Boeing 314 Clipper. The small village of Foynes was one of the biggest civilian airports in Europe during World War II, and the B-314 was a long-range flying boat that offered unbelievable luxury, including a 14-seat dining room and honeymoon suite. A one-way ticket from New York to Foynes, by the way, would have run you about $395. Our tour of Ireland continues with some of the most beautiful spots on earth. From the tallest cliffs to an ancient cave, there's so much more to explore. Evening from the Emerald Isle, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Evening from the Emerald Isle. Any journey across Ireland has to include a stop along the Ring of Kerry, a 111 mile stretch of road showcasing spectacular valleys and some of the world's most insta-worthy views. The Irish landscape really does just take your breath away. These are the Cliffs of Moher. More on that in just a second. But first, our guides from Adventures by Disney took us to another must-see spot. Loch Lean, a majestic castle, and a secret little island. Ross Castle is what storybooks are made of. A stronghold from the Middle Ages, the grounds are free to roam, and a short boat ride transports you even further back in time. Across the waters of Loch Lean, that's Gaelic for Lake of Learning, named for an ancient abbey on a 21-acre island. The island is called the Island of Inishvalum. Monks farmed and studied here from the 6th to the 13th centuries, but the enchanted spot is still full of life. You'll also find what may be one of the oldest Celtic crosses in Europe. The coins represent wishes. It's a kind of a tradition in Ireland if you go to a holy place and they just drop down money and say a prayer. But of course the kids come out then and they, they, buy, they get some money and buy sweets for themselves. <laughs> oh, that's a fact, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was spectacular, but this kind of takes the cake, the Cliffs of Moher. It is one of the island's most visited locations, second only to the Guinness Storehouse, in fact, and it's pretty easy to see why. 
From the live soundtrack at the beginning of your journey to the sweeping cinematic views, few places on earth are as dramatic as the Cliffs of Moher on Ireland's west coast. See? You might recognize them from movies like The Princess Bride and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, but nothing prepares you for seeing the jagged landscape in person. It is wonderful, it's really wonderful. The sea cliffs loom 700 feet above the Atlantic, and the walking trail is about five miles long. Head south to Hag's Head, and you might spy puffins, though they are hard to see, even with a telephoto lens. The other direction leads to the highest point above the sea, O'Brien's Tower, a centuries-old observation deck. Yeah, this is a view. On a clear day, you can see three different counties and the Aran Islands. A sight to behold from any angle, and a must-do in Ireland. All right, from cliffs to caves, just a few miles from the Cliffs of Moher, you'll find Alloway Cave, estimated to be more than one million years old. It is a fascinating road trip stop, complete with an underground waterfall and the bones of long-extinct Irish brown bears. From decadent chocolate to farm-to-table dining, we fall in love with Irish cuisine when evening from the Emerald Isle continues. Welcome back to Evening from the Emerald Isle. This was one of our sweetest experiences with Adventures by Disney, a chocolate-making workshop at Lord's Chocolatier. Chef Benoit shared the secret to making the perfect chocolate caramel. I'm feeling the mold. We push back the excess of chocolate inside. I'm shaving the side, looking for chasing the air bubbles. Then one, two, three, upside down, chocolate win. Three, two, one, go. And then we race to see who could fill the molds the fastest. Okay, perfect. Shake hands. And the winner, the winner, it was a tough game, but that was well done. Ultimately, everyone left a winner because we got to eat some of Ireland's finest chocolate. Lord's Chocolatier was just one of the kind of surprising dining experiences that we've had here. Irish cuisine has come a long way, from the fine dining menu here at the Great Southern Killarney Hotel to a place called Murphy's, which had some of the best ice cream I have ever tasted. We also got to travel into the countryside for a traditional farm dinner. At Rathbon Farm in Ireland's County Galway. Good afternoon, everybody. You're very welcome. <laughs> Guests are welcomed like family. Our evening began with an Irish cheese tasting. Made and cured by hand from the milk of the Gabean herd. Then we made our own dessert. So, when we're making scones, what's the first thing we do? You turn on the oven. And I have learned over the years that if I preheat the baking sheets as well, that it speeds, it speeds it up. Lumps of butter. Listen, add the fruit one by one, like this. <laughs> Nice, that's perfect. With scones in the oven, we headed outside. The average sheep that you see down there has about three kilos of wool. The highlight, bottle feeding baby lamb. Oh, yeah. That's so nice. You're thirsty. After that hard work, dinner time. Home cooked beef stew, cabbage, and bacon, and potatoes. And for dessert, the fruits of our labor. A sweet ending to the perfect day.
Oh, it is the kind of place that you just never want to leave. But unfortunately, this is where our show has to come to an end. We hope that you have enjoyed this tour of the Emerald Isle. And if you would like to plan your own adventure by Disney, we have all of the information that you need on our website, king5evening.com. Thanks for joining us and good night from Ireland.